Morning, everybody. Rusty from the Rusty Razor. Got another shave of the day for you. All right, today we're going to be doing a little bit of Sterling's British Leather. Well, it smells like leather and fern. Got a lot of furnish off of it. It's kind of a powdery fern leather smell. Very pleasant. Like it. And once you lather it up, you get more of that kind of a wet leather. If you ever had your motorcycle leathers when you're get, going through a major th thunderstorm, that's what it smells like to me. Hey, that's the best way to soften up your leather jacket. And you still get that fern kind of smell to it. Almost, uh, uh, I would almost say begonias, but not quite. Nice scent. And uh, we're going to be using the King C Gillette with Astro Blades. I think this is the second use of the Astro Blades. And followed up by, yes, you've seen it before, English leather. Because that's what the man's supposed to wear. Right? Okay. Alrighty. Put a little bit of moisture on the face. Hope everybody's day is going good. I think this is probably the last video I'll be out this week. Other than, well, you already seen what the other one is. But, uh, time constraints this week. Time is at a premium. I don't have time for a third one, probably. There's a lot of early, early, early morning stuff going to happen around here. So, I don't feel like getting up at 5 a.m. to do a shave video. Um, I have a hard time getting up at... It's like those, these, some of these days when I got to get up at 6 a.m. It's like, oh my God, I hate those days. I'm typically hitting the, the hay about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So if I'm supposed to get up at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m., that means I probably didn't go to bed. It's just easier not to. I just have a hard time taking a nap. That's basically how I look at it. Alrighty. And basically, this is a quarter size amount of soap that I scraped off that puck. And I probably could have used a little bit more moisture in there. It's still a little sticky. But, got plenty. We'll just see how this works out. So, how's everybody's day going? Mine is doing pretty decently so far. Still working on my house projects from, you know, we got uh, new windows put in. It's like some of it was like they uh, put new sheetrock in some of the places. So I'm going around mudding and sanding and and I gotta move everything around and repaint. My plan is to repaint the entire inside of the house. While everything is still moved around. It's just easier. If you ever done that yourself, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Blade seems to be working pretty good. Yeah, the King C. Gillette is an excellent razor, in my opinion, for me. If this was the only one I picked up, I could see myself shaving with it the entire lifetime. Because it checks off a lot of boxes. The only thing I dislike about it is the knurling on this handle it needs to be about another inch. But... Got some knife heft to it. Really getting that leather scent coming off now. Probably because it's warmed up on my face.
Hmm. Knocked it down. Got some nice residual slickness. <sighs> so, this says we're getting up into that holiday weekend coming up here. Hope everybody's got plans. My son asked me, he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I got no plans. He's like, well, that's something. If you want to go to a baseball game, we can do that. Because he's plans on buying tickets to the, the game. It's like if the twins are in town, go see them. Do that about once a year. Take the four hour trip north and go see a game. Usually try to coincide if the uh, uh, Red Sox are in town up north. My son's a Red Sox fan. I don't know where I went wrong with it. It's like taught him to be a nice Twins fan, and next thing you know, he goes and joins the Navy and becomes a Red Sox fan. How's that happen? I don't know, but I suppose it's because the Red Sox were constantly in the World Series, and like you want to be with them, the some winners, I guess. He's also talking about it. it's like my uh, wife is a huge. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers fan and which is interesting she's never been to a Pittsburgh I don't think she's ever been to Pittsburgh and she's lived her entire life well not can't say her entire life she was born in Africa but But they, uh, somehow she became a Steelers fan, but mostly because the Steelers, uh, they went to four Super Bowls in the uh, 70s. So the young kid, girl, she got on the bandwagon and being a Steelers fan. Me, I was on the, the Vikings bandwagon because I grew up in Minnesota. And go to four Super Bowls and lose four Super Bowls. That's horrible. Like being a bridesmaid. Never the bride. But they're playing. They got the Vikings Steelers game. He said he's planning on getting together with my daughter and buying tickets to the game. And giving them my wife as a gift early Christmas present so she can go see a game <clears throat> I uh I haven't been to the last uh, football game I went to is when the Vikings were in the still in the Metrodome way back in the day. Seeing the it was, see it was a lot easier to go see a baseball game than it is a football game, mostly because it's. Uh, costs involved nowadays and you know it got limited games and they usually sell out it's like you can get into a baseball game pretty easy because they hardly ever sell out and you just get the tickets readily off online it's like months in advance and it's like hey, we're ready to go Yeah, my 
wife and I on our honeymoon. We went to Chicago for our honeymoon. Yeah, that's what you do when you're kind of poor. And we went to the very first night game at Wrigley Field. The previous night was, well, we had went to that, and it got rained out. So we went had tickets to the next night because we it's like we were going to go to the entire series at when they were in town and so we actually got to go to the very f official night game at Wrigley Field, August of '88. It's kind of cool, a little bit of history. But beforehand at Wrigley, it was no lights at all. So they only played day games at Wrigley Field. And this allowed them to start playing night games. So. so a little bit of history involved there. Been to a lot of baseball parks around the country. You know, it was wherever I was stationed in different areas around the country. I went to try to go to different games and wherever it may be. Just, it's always, it's like if your favorite team's in town, you know, you always get the tickets and go and the most interesting one was, uh, we were out in California, because my brother-in-law at the time lived out in California. And we went to a uh, Giants game. And it was the, uh, Reds, Giants series. So we went and watched that. And that Pete Rose was the manager, player manager then. And we got to see him before everything blew up on that betting on baseball thing, which I think personally he's done his time. He should be able to be eligible for the uh, Hall of Fame. But And the uh, pitcher that was on the mound, I can't remember his name, he broke his arm pitching. They found out he had cancer in his arm. He had to amputate. So he was a one-armed pitcher. Somebody know who remembers who that is. The most memorable games was when they, uh, I was in college back in 87 and that fall, all the guys that were on my dorm floor that wanted to go, we all got a uh, group of, uh, I was went, I went up to the Metro down to watch the Twins and that was the year they went to the World Series. Bunch of rowdy college guys. <laughs> yeah, we uh, had fun. And when I was uh, stationed in Colorado, 
used to go see the stuff there. You know, we went in Bronco games and And they had the Colorado Rockies were coming in, actually as an expansion team. Well, needless to say, I've seen a lot of teams in my day. Sports was always important. Go and see stuff. It's enjoyable. Nowadays, it's like tossing an arm and a leg to go to. It's like, I remember when we went to the Metro Dome for a football game, it cost 35 bucks for a ticket. Now, I think the cheapest are almost like $200. Definitely can't afford to take a family to the, the game anymore. Uh, smells good. Nice shave. I think I'm missing. Where? We'll find it. Oh, there it is. English leather. There you go. My man waited, waited, wears English leather or nothing at all. Those commercials from the 70s. For you youngsters. Wow, there was lots of innuendo in all of the commercials now. Definitely getting that citrus coming off there and that leather. Mmm, smells good. Don't use this often enough, I guess, probably. But it's nice. All right, so that was the shave of the day with British leather from Sterling. Nice soap, nice scent, feels nice, that performs well. That was the King C Gillette with some Astro Blades. Nice combination, worked great for me. Followed up with some English leather aftershave. All right, so that's it. So hit the like button, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Rusty out.